Om Sam Sarsvati Maha. Namaste. Namaste, everyone. On page 280, we're going to begin the discussion of chapter 14. Ramakrishna was visiting the house of some devotees accompanied by Narendra, Girish, Balaram, Tunilal, Lotu, M, and Narayan. The devotees were discussing pure and spiritual topics with great delight. This is the first discussion in a devotee's home with the devotees. It was the tenth day of the dark fortnight in the lunar month of Falgun, and the man was in the Purva Nakshatra. The solar day was Wednesday, the 11th of March, 1885. It was around 10 o'clock in the morning. Ramakrishna had come from Dokshineshwar accompanied by Latu and other devotees. They stopped at Balaram's temple and partook of prasad from the Jagannath temple in Puri. Ramakrishna. Balaram, you are blessed. Your light today is illuminating the field of divine action. There were many new devotees and Ramakrishna welcomed them all. How he sang and danced with the devotees, just like in the temple of Gauranga Mahaprabhu, where everyone sang and danced in ecstatic bliss. Sri Ramakrishna sat crying in the Kali temple of Dokineshwar. He was looking inside himself and feeling it an extreme burning, sincere desire to see his most intimate devotees. In the evening, he had become so restless, he couldn't sleep. Ramakrishna to Mother. Ma, Balaram has great devotion. Draw him to you. Bring him here. If he can't come, then you take me there. I want to see him. The very next day, Ramakrishna immediately took off for Balaram's house. Ramakrishna to all the assembled people. Balaram has been performing seva for Jagannath for some time and has grown very pure in the process. I invited Narendra, Balaram, Rakal, Bhavna to visit his house with me so that they may be fed by him. You see, they are not just ordinary devotees, but they are actually parts of divinity made flesh. If you feed them, it's like feeding God. You will earn a lot of good merit. When you feed pure souls, your own soul benefits greatly. It was during a visit to Balaram's house that Ramakrishna had met Girish Ghosh for the first time. The Ratyatra, where everybody pulls a carriage that carries the deities, had been celebrated at Balaram's house. There had been such merriment on that occasion. It was like a festival of love. Everyone had felt great delight, singing and dancing to express their devotion. Now, devotees had gathered once again in the home of Balaram with great bliss. M was teaching at a school nearby. When M heard that Ramakrishna was visiting Balaram's house, he took time off and came to pay his respects. Upon arrival, M at once bowed down to Sri Ramakrishna in reverence. Ramakrishna had just completed his meal and was sitting in the parlor taking rest. He was eating pan masala and some sweets. He was flanked on all four sides by some youthful devotees. Ramakrishna to the devotees. How, how have you young people come to see me? Don't you have school today? <laughs> and we all came as there is no special work going on in the school today. <laughs> he was the teacher. <laughs> A devotee. No, sir, that's not true. He fled from the school. <laughs> and everyone laughed at him. M, some irresistible energy has pulled me here. M, 
Adam seemed quite concerned for Ramakrishna. He sat right beside him and they began to talk. Ramakrishna, my little towel is soaking wet. Would you put it someplace to dry? Uh, put my shirt someplace where it can dry as well. <laughs> my feet pain me. Please massage them a little. <laughs> M, as yet, had a reluctance to do seva. That's why Ramakrishna started to teach him how to serve properly. M finished his appointed task very quickly and then started to press Ramakrishna's feet with his hands. Ramakrishna began to talk about many subjects like who is a sannyasi? What is renunciation? And how does one cultivate divine qualities? Ramakrishna to M. For the past several days, I have been feeling something strange in my body. Do you happen to know the reason? I can't touch anything metallic. Once I touched a bowl and I felt as though I had been stung by a scorpion. My hand ached. Tremendously, I'm not even able to touch the metal water pot next to the toilet to wash myself. And that's why I thought, I'll wet down my towel and take it with me. I'll see if I can't grab it with the wet towel. When I put my hand there, my hand began to pain me very greatly. Great pain came up. Ultimately, I pre prayed to the Divine Mother, Mother, please! Don't make me take any kind of action. Please, excuse me. Ramakrishna, continuing to M. Little Naren visits here quite often. M. He has grown both physically and spiritually. Ramakrishna to M. Yes, when little Naren hears anything divine, it stays with him. He remembers everything. When he was a young boy, he used to cry to that God didn't show himself to him. While well, Ramakrishna and Am were talking about little Narayan, one devotee remarked, Am, aren't you going to go back to the school? <laughs> Ramakrishna, what is the time? Oh, it has become 1.10 p.m. Ramakrishna to Am, you better go as you are getting late. You have left your work. Ramakrishna to Latu. Where's Rakha? Latu. He went home. Ramakrishna. He left without seeing me? The second discussion. Definition of an avatar and how Ramakrishna conforms to that definition. Ramakrishna was sitting in Balaram's parlor amidst the devotees having a good time. He was laughing sweetly, and his laughter radiated in the bright faces of the devotees. M came back into the room and bowed to Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna made M sit next to him again. The respected Dirish Kosh, Suresh Mitra, Balaram, Laku, Chumilal, and various other devotees were present in the room. Ramakrishna to Girish. Talk with Narendra and find out the different ideas that he likes to discuss. Girish laughs. Narendra says, God is infinite. Whatever we see and hear are all a part of God. We don't have the capacity to extol all the qualities of God, the infinite ether, the infinite sky. It doesn't have parts. How do you divide the sky? Ramakrishna. It is true that God is infinite. He is as great and as vast as can be. But if he desires, he can dwell in the form of a human. He comes in the form of an avatar, an incarnation of God. You can feel all the attributes of this manifestation of divinity, but you cannot understand it intellectually. You want to see it with your own eyes? You want to assume some of those qualities and practice them in your own life? If you touch the horns of a cow, you've touched the cow. 
If you touch the foot or the tail, you have still touched the cow. For us, the real essence of the cow is in the milk that comes from its udder. In the same way, in order to teach us love and devotion, God comes in the form of an individual human being. Girish. Narendra asks, how, can, how you can comprehend all of these different aspects fully? God is infinite. The perception of the infinite. Ramakrishna to Girish. Who can contemplate the infinity of God? You can neither feel nor have the attitude of the total ta totality of divinity. You can neither feel nor have the attitude of the smallest part of God. What necessity is there in thinking about God? It is enough if you can see him with your own eyes. If you see an incarnation of the divine, then you have seen the divine. When people go to the Ganga River and touch the water, they say that I have had the darshan of Mother Ganga. It is not necessary to go from Haridwar to Ganga Sagar and touch every drop of water in the river in order to say that one has seen the river. Everyone laughed. Ramakrishna, I, if I've touched your foot, I say that I've touched you. Everyone laughed again. <laughs> Ramakrishna, if you go to the ocean and touch some of the water, then you've touched the ocean. The principle of fire is everywhere, but it is most predominant in wood. At that, Girish began to laugh. Ramakrishna, wherever I find fire, that's my place. And Ramakrishna began to laugh. <laughs> Ramakrishna, the principle of fire is manifest most predominantly in wood. In the same way, you must look inside humanity if you want to search for the principle of divinity. His illumination is most prevalent in humanity. If you look at a human that is intoxicated with love for God, you will know for certain that this individual has become an incarnation of God. M was looking at Sri Ramakrishna with one-pointed vision and listening with one-pointed attention. Ramakrishna, that is divinity. Sometimes that energy is greatly manifested and, and at other times quietly hidden away. There is a great illumination inside the incarnation of God. Sometimes that energy is full and complete, and that energy becomes the incarnation of divinity. The individual's mind is illuminated with light. The, this is the pure mind. This is not about intellect. It's about pure intellect. When attachments and desires and selfishness go away, the pure mind and the pure intellect demonstrate themselves. When the pure mind and the pure intellect are one, this is called the pure mind. Haven't you heard of the rishis and monis? They stood before consciousness and actually perceived consciousness. Girish laughing. Narendra was defeated in debate by me. Ramakrishna, no! He told me that Girish believes in avatars. Now, what shall I say? If he has that kind of faith, then there's nothing more to say. Girish laughing again. Oh, great, sir. Mahashai. All of my questions have been resolved, but M is sitting here so quietly. What could he possibly be thinking upon listening to your talk? Ramakrishna began to laugh. Ramakrishna. Narendra is a very deep soul. You have to be very careful with these kinds of people. Also be careful with people who talk too much. Inside, they are very silent. 
No matter how deep you go, you will never be able to understand their minds. They stick tulsi leaves in their hair so that everyone will think they are a devotee. This is the meaning of the poem that he was reciting. Chumila to Ramakrishna. People are talking badly about M because he brought his students, little Naren, Baburam, Narayan, Poltu, Purna, and Tejachandra to them. They are doing poorly in their studies as a result. <laughs> in a way, he is at fault. Ramakrishna, will, who will believe their words? While this conversation was going on, Narayan arrived and bowed down to Thakur. Ramakrishna loved this boy very much. Narayan was a very fair-complexioned young man, about 17 or 18 years old, and a student. Ramakrishna would often become restless, sit in Dokshineshwar and cry if he could not see Narayan. He would say that in Narayan he could actually see God. Dirish, looking at Narayan, who gave him the news that Ramakrishna is visiting here? <laughs> I see him has been creating more trouble. <laughs> Everyone laughed. Ramakrishna with great laughter, be careful, shop done, be quiet, they will start saying bad things about him again. <laughs> Worrying about food is a wonderful subject and the results of the Brahmin's acceptance of dips. Once again, a discussion arose about Narendra, a devotee. Why does he not come these days? Ramakrishna, the worry for food is wonderful indeed. Even Kalidas, the great writer and poet, lost his mind thinking about it. Everyone laughed. Balaram, Narendra frequently visits Shiva Guha's eldest son, Anam. Ramakrishna, yes, along with Ananda, Narendra often goes to one officer's house where they are having meetings of the Brahmo Samaj. A devotee, that officer's name is Tarapad. Balaram, with great laughter, the Brahmins say that Ananda has a great ego. Ramakrishna, don't listen to everything the Brahmins say. You know what kind of people they are. You judged, you are judged good or bad depending on how much you give them. <laughs> Everyone laughed. I know Ananda, he is a good person. The third discussion. The bliss of singing in the company of devotees. Takur has declared his desire to listen to songs, bhajans, and, or hymns. Balaram's parlor was filled with people eager to observe Ramakrishna and listen to his words. Tarapad began to sing.
vocation. Give grace to the lowly. You who roam in the groves of Vrindavan, O Baba, who mesmerizes all minds while holding that mesmerizing flute. O oh my mind, sing the name of Hori, sing the name of Hori, sing the name of Hori. O oh young boy of Vrindavan, who took away the fear of the snake Kaliya, take away the fear from all. Oh, you with large round eyes, with a crown of peacock feathers, you are the delight of Rava's heart. Oh, you who are adorned with wild flowers, who raised the mountain Govardhan, it is you who destroyed the pride of Kamsh. Oh, dark one, you play with the gopis with great delight. Oh, my mind, sing the name of Hori, sing the name of Hori. Ramakrishna to Girish. Ah, he sings very well. Did you write all the songs? One devotee. Yes, Girish wrote all the songs of the Chaitanya Leela drama. Ramakrishna to Girish. This particular song has come out very well. Ramakrishna to the singer. Can you sing a song about Nitai? Then, Parapad sang a song about Nita. A hurricane has risen in the sea of love. 
My thoughts no longer remain my own. My mind has been filled with Goram. In the midst of Vrajra, the area of Vrindavan, you appeared as a cowherd tending to his cows. You played that mesmerizing flute, stealing the hearts and minds of the gopis by lifting the mountain Gohardhan. You saved Vrindavan. You showed your respect to the gopis by touching their feet while shedding tears of love. My mind has been filled with Gauranga. Everyone requested M to sing a song. <laughs> M was embarrassed and whispered into Ramakrishna's ears. Girish, laughing to Ramakrishna, Oh great sir, Mahashai, it looks like M doesn't want to sing any song at all. Ramakrishna, he goes to school and shows his teeth, but to sing a song he puts on a dark face. <laughs> Suresh Mitra was sitting a little farther away. Ramakrishna looked at him with a puzzled glance and then pointing to Girish Ghosh, asked Suresh, who, who are you? He's Girish. Who are you? Suresh laughing, he is my older brother. They all began to laugh. Ramakrishna, Mohima Chakraborty has read many scriptures. He is much respected. Girish, yes, he has great knowledge. I haven't forgotten him. Girish to Ramakrishna, I didn't study well when I was a child, and yet some people say that I'm smart. Ramakrishna laughing. Do you know the kind of attitude we need to have with books and scriptures? They are all here to help us to reach God. They are like road maps. They are here to teach the path and to show the means of attainment. How many books and scriptures do you need? You have to do the work yourself. One man received a letter from his family asking him to buy some items. There were many things written down, but he misplaced the letter. He began to search high and low and got everyone involved to find out where he had put the letter. When he finally found it, his delight knew no bounds. With great care, he opened and read the contents. In it, it was written that he had to send five kilos of sweets, a roll of cloth, and a few other things. Then he threw it away, as there was no more need for the letter. He purchased the sweets, the cloth, and all the other things that were on the list. So, for how long was the letter necessary? Just so long as he couldn't remember the sweets, the cloth, and the other things on the list. Once he knew what was needed, it was time for the implementation. The scriptures de describe the way to attain God. But after you've learned all the ways to attain to godliness, you have to begin the work. Only then can you get to God. Just, by, just being a pundit is not sufficient. The pundits can memorize many verses and know many scriptures. However, they have selfishness in their worldly dealings and great love for their desires and attachments. Just carrying the scriptures is of no use to anyone. Even if it is written in the almanac that it is going to rain today, you won't get even a drop of water by squeezing the almanac. <laughs> Everybody laughed. <laughs> Girish jokingly. You mean if you squeeze the almanac, you won't get even one drop of water? <laughs> and everyone began to laugh again. Around the Krishna laughing. The pundits talk, talk, talk. What do they really know? Where is their perception? All that they really seem to care about are their desires and attachments, the comfort of their bodies, and the collection plate. The vultures fly very high in the sky, but their perception remains focused on the earth, 
looking for dead animals. Ramakrishna to Girish. Narendra is a very good boy. He sings and is active in sports. He is smart and a good student. He has conquered his senses. He has discrimination and renunciation. He speaks the truth. He has many good qualities. What do you think? Am I right? Girish, yes. M, he is. Ramakrishna, look, M. M has a great feeling for Girish. They have bonded. M is looking at Girish with one pointed attention. Girish has known M for just a few days, but says that by the way that M looks at him, he feels as though it is an old relationship. He feels as though they have been friends for a long time, or like they are close relatives. It looks like they have been stitched together with the same thread. They are jewels out of the same group. M and Girish to Ramakrishna. Sir, won't you sing it for us? Yeah. <laughs> Ramakrishna, with a beautiful, sweet voice, began to sing of the divine quality.
are the mother of all bliss. Don't make me devoid of bliss. Mother, fill my mind with your two lotus feet. I don't want to know anything more. I don't even need to know what's happening to this body composed of five elements. I'm simply going to sing the name of Divine Mother and sail through this worldly sea singing your name. This is my only desire. You can submerge me in the ocean of this world, but I won't know anything. I only know my devotion to you. Day and night I'm swimming in the bliss of your name. Durga, Durga, Durga. I'm totally immersed day and night in the name of Durga. But still all the pain has not left me. If I go on in this way, O oh, most beautiful one, I shall surely die, and there won't be anybody to sing the name of Durga. <laughs> Ramakrishna sang another song about the mother of eternal supreme consciousness. <clears throat> Supreme, the great swan. If you take the 
conveyance of Ramakrishna, you will reach to the Brahma Loka. Uh, Swamiji, a question from Kumari. Namaste, Kumari Ma. Pranam, Mother and Swamiji, Sri Ramakrishna says many times that faith is the root of everything in spiritual life. That when a devotee has faith, all else comes easily. How can a devotee cultivate faith? The way we cultivate faith is being in close proximity to those who've got it. Satsang. You've got to be in association with people who believe and they practice their beliefs and they live their belief. And then suddenly you start cultivating the similar value system as the examples with, with whom you surround yourself. So satsang is the primary ingredient. And when you want to cultivate faith, be with believers and you will believe yourself. And practice as they practice, and your belief, your faith will grow. Swamiji, a question from Nanda from San Jose. Namaste, Nanda Ma. How does, Pranam and Swamiji, how does one learn to not feel any resentment towards anyone for any wrong that they do towards us? Nanda Ma, just please contemplate how many times you. Return the favor. <laughs> How many wrongs have you committed yourself and wouldn't you want to be forgiven? And so forgive others as you will want to be forgiven. And every time you feel resentment because they have wronged you, think of how many times you may have wronged another. And then have a little compassion for them because if you understand and you know fully well that it's wrong to commit wrong to others and still you did it then you can forgive others for having committed wrong to you how uh, can a how does a sannyasi relate to his family like his parents once he has taken up sannyas Thank you. With great devotion and great respect without attachment. Great devotion and great respect, but I am no longer present to serve them as my family. I will do what is required of me to the extent a sannyasi is capable. But I have to draw some lines, I have to create some limits, I have to make a clear understanding because if they are requesting me to renounce my renunciation, it's not possible. I cannot renounce my renunciation because that's a contract I made between me and God. I can renounce my things, and as a sannyasi, I have a pair of chantas, I have a yantra, I have a loincloth, and a begging bowl. Those are my things. Dear family, which of them would you like? You're entitled to them. <laughs> the rest is, it belongs to God. Ask God if you have any other need. Now, if you're in pain, if you're injured, if you're suffering, you need someone to come and comfort you. If you need someone to come and perform rites, a, a, a passage for the members of the family, certainly I will be there to be the, in a priestly function to fulfill the spiritual requirements of the family. But if you're asking that I renounce my renunciation and go get a job so you can have a finer living standard or more enjoyments of the world, then that's not a proper request. That's not something that one would wish from someone who has renounced the world. I have to use my discrimination even if my family cannot use theirs. There are certain limitations to what I define is my responsibility. If you need a conveyance, certainly I have a, an old truck that I can let you drive. But if you want me to go get you a Mercedes Benz, it will be very difficult for me. That's not the Dharma of a sannyasi. 
And we have to define the limitations where, and each of us will define that ourselves. Where is my boundary? Ooh, how much can I commit to the world? And how much can I commit to God? If we are sannyasi, that we are established in truth. And truth is established within us. So we question from Nilima from New Delhi. Namaste Nilima. Namaste Ma and Swamiji. Ma's singing lifts our hearts and fills it with the divine instantly. In a way that even hours of puja and chanting cannot. Why is that so? How, how, how to bring that kind of joy in one's own puja? Thank you. Nilima, the reason it's so is because she's had the experience. You can understand it immediately when you hear the song. Now, the way to bring that in your own puja is to come here to the Devi Mandir. Well, how about this? I not know. And listen to the songs, and listen to the Bob, and listen to the, 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 watch the way of her worship, and the way of her life, and the rhythm of her life, and see her, what values are important to her, and then go home. Ramakrishna is saying to us again and again, spend some time in the Devi Mandir. <laughs> it says it right here in the book. <laughs> Spend some time in solitude. Spend some time away from the attachments of the sansa. And then move closer and closer to the bhava of your sansa. Om Sam Saraswati Namaha. Namaste.